converting log footage to Rec. 709 in order to start color grading can be challenging. It's definitely tricky, but it is something that can be learned. And once you really understand it, then you can get through the process of converting log footage and really being able to optimize the quality of your camera sensor. If you have a camera that can not shoot log, and I'm going to show you a few ways that you can convert the log footage. If you are using DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut Pro or Color Finale within Final Cut Pro. And so we can get to the best part and that is color grading and adding life with color to our footage. Let's get into it. So now we're in Final Cut Pro. We have three clips on the timeline. What we want to do is use an adjustment layer. We want three of them, probably four. And how I'm doing this, I'm just pressing option, clicking and holding and dragging to create another layer. And I'm going to split these, but I know for this last one for Color Finale Pro, we only need one. We're going to rename. We're going to call this one contrast. We're going to call this one midtones. And we're going to call this one saturation. Each tab is assigned its own property. So we're going to start with contrast and with contrast, we want to add in a color curve. And then the, the only color curve we're going to be using is the Luma curve. And we're going to add two points, one point here and one point here. And with this, we're going to take the first point and we're just going to drag down, bring in the shadows down until we bring some contrast back into the image. And we're going to take the second point and we're going to drag up, bringing the highlights back up. And I just like to lift this up to bring back a little bit of the shadows and bring this down to taper off the highlights. Just how I like to do it. Contrast is done. Now let's check out the midtones. You can use the color wheels to do the same thing, which I'll go back to the contrast and I'll turn this off. We'll go to color wheels. You can do the same thing. Go to the shadows, bring the shadows down. Bring the mid of the highlights back up a bit and you have contrast and you can play with the mid tones to taper it out a bit. It's really up to you, but we're going to go back to the color curves, turn it back on. And now we're going to go back to the mid tones. We're going to add another color curve and we're just going to put a middle point right in the middle. And we're going to drag down and that is where we're going to keep it about right there. As you can see, there is some contrast. I mean, some saturation in there in the, in the red, but if you want to boost the saturation, this is where we would use the color wheel and we would boost the, oh, we don't want that one. We're going to boost the saturation of the shadows. Just boost it just a bit. Let's go back to white balance to white balance in final cut pro. We'll go back to the white balance adjustment layer. We'll go right to this middle one right here and we'll click on balance color. And we want to go to white balance. So we'll go from the color tab up to the film strip tab, choose the white balance, click on the dropper and click on the white part of the image. And now you, you've white balanced your footage. And this is after we've already white balanced in camera. We're just correcting the colors before we get on to actually getting to our footage. Now, if you had someone with skin tones, it would be a little different right now. We're not really focused on skin tones. We're just focused on converting this footage to Rec. 709. I have all the adjustment layers here. I renamed them and we're just going to go through each one by one. Now we're going to start with the conversion LUT. I'll turn this back on and how we want to get to the conversion LUT is when I go up to the film strip and in the color tab, you want to go down to custom LUT. You take the custom LUT, drag it over onto the adjustment layer and then the adjustment layer, you click the drop down, choose your LUT of choice. This is a S log three clip. So I chose S log three. And as you can see, let's turn this on and off. This is what it looks like with the LUTs off. And that's what it looks like when the LUT is on. And next we want to white balance. And how we want to white balance is we want to go down here at the bottom left of the screen, choose the, uh, the magic wand, go to balance color, go up into the tab where it says balance color, click the dropper, click the whitest part of the scene, 
and let it balance out the color. And next, we want to focus on contrast. So with the contrast, I'll turn it off. As you can see, I just add a little more contrast to the image because I didn't really like how, the, how little the contrast was. I used the color wheel on this one instead of the color curve. But let's turn off the color curve, add a, or turn off the color wheel, turn on the color curve, and do the same step of bringing down the shadows a little bit, bring up the highlights, taper off the highlights in the shadows. And then we'll go to saturation. In saturation, I used a color wheel and I boosted the saturation just a little bit. Decrease the saturation in the shadows. As you can see, if I turn up the shadows where that is, decrease the saturation and shadows a bit. And that's how I use the conversion LUT in Final Cut Pro. Now we're gonna look at how I do it in Color Finale Pro. Now we're gonna go over to this third clip and this adjustment layer. We're gonna rename this adjustment layer to Color Finale Pro. If you have Color Finale Pro installed, you go to Color Finale. Grab Color Finale, drag it onto the adjustment layer. And while you're on the adjustment tab, go over to the film strip. And now you see the interface for Color Finale Pro. When you want to start in color management, click the color management tab. And then you want to go down to assume log. Basically, assume log gives you a basic log look. You can use ACES and ACES allows you to choose the input space that you shot the footage in and then choose the output space and that is to Rec 709. And it gives you a Rec 709 image. And to white balance, the white balance is right here. You click the white balance and choose the whitest part of the image. And you see the number values next to RGB, that's the red, green, and blue. You want them to be as close as possible to balance out the white balance. As you can see, there's a green tint and you can adjust that with the temp temperature, tint, saturation, or you can go through the whole workflow of using the layer tool in here, which is similar to DaVinci Resolve, which we will be talking about next. But that's pretty much how I will convert my footage in Color Finale Pro. And then there's one more step that you can use, which is input LUT. And that'll allow you to use a LUT that you input into Color Finale Pro. And I usually use my basic grade which is a base grade that converts the footage to Rec. 709, adds a little saturation, bring down the midtones just a little bit. And then once I use that LUT, I go directly into the Layers tab and I do a color grade. And that is how I use Color Finale Pro to convert my footage from S-Log or F-Log to Rec. 709. Now let's look at DaVinci Resolve. All right, so now we are in DaVinci Resolve. We have three clips for the three different workflows that I use in DaVinci Resolve. So the first one, if I want to manually convert the footage, I use this simple node starting point with these three nodes. And this fourth node, I usually use Dehancer, but let's just stick with the first three, contrast, midtones, and saturation. So for the contrast, we're gonna start with a custom curve. We're gonna give it two points, the same as what we did in Final Cut Pro. Bring the shadows down, lift the highlights a bit, taper off the highlights just a bit, lift the shadows on the back end, and we're pretty much there. Start with midtones, one point right in the middle, and we're gonna bring down the midtones just a bit. And from there, I usually drag this down a bit more depending on uh, which level I expose. Go to saturation, we're gonna go to the primaries wheel, and we're just going to add color boost. And that is pretty much it. That's the manual conversion. You can have it look however you want. Doesn't have to look like this, but it's how I usually convert it the manual way. And the second way we're going to use a color space transform. And that is already in DaVinci Resolve. And where we're going to find that is over in the effects library, which you can find right up here. Click the effects. And you want to go down to you see Resolve fx color go down to the color space transform you want to drag that onto the first node and the last node and then the first node you want to choose the input color space this is a s log clip so i'm just going to click s to go down to the s's choose s log gamut 3 dot cine 
And then for the input gamma, I'm going to hit S again to go to S log three. And it pretty much already looks good right there, but we want to also uh, work on the output color space. And I'm just going to use the DaVinci wide gamut. So I click D, go down to uh, DaVinci wide gamut, go down to the output gamma, press D again, turn it to DaVinci intermediate. And now we're basically looking at a log footage, kind of a log image that has a little more contrast. But if we turn it off, you can see that's with, with it off and then turn it back on. Now we want to click on the output and we're going to go to the input space and we're going to copy the input from the output space. So if we go back over here to the input tab, we see the output color is DaVinci Y gamut and the output gamma is DaVinci intermediate. We want to stack these two the same on the output. So DaVinci Y gamut, DaVinci intermediate, and we're going to also for the output. Now we want to convert this to Rec 709. And then the output gamma is gamma 2.4. And now that's pretty, that's pretty much it. And just to add a little more spice, we'll go to midtones, go to the custom curve, click right in the middle, bring those midtones down a little bit because I like my images a little bit moody. Go to the saturation node, click the wheels, give it a little color boost. And that's pretty much it for this conversion. Next, we're gonna use the custom LUT or, tr or transform LUT to transform this into Rec 709. So I'm just gonna put one node here, but usually I would have another node and that's where Dehancer will go. We're gonna focus on this first node. And on this first node, we want to right click the node, go down to LUT, wherever you have your LUT. Right now I'm working on a few different LUTs that I'm working on that I'm, I'm gonna be using going forward to make this whole process easier because it has been taking me a while to get videos done and I'm just working on a quicker workflow. So we're going to go down to whichever LUT you are using. I'm just going to go here and go to my uh, S log to Rec 709. And that's pretty much it all across the three, the three different ways that I convert my log footage to Rec 709. But that's the workflow for converting the log footage to Rec 709 and the programs that I use to edit videos for this platform and for client work.